Okay, so you have this great hollow form that you've made. You've smoothed it out. It's nice and joined together out of your two pinch pots. Um, make sure to really take some time to refine it. Um, now, what are you gonna do with it? So here's where hopefully your research from earlier this week in your sketchbook comes in. You're gonna be, take some inspiration from some artists. Um, if th that wasn't enough for you, go online, um, look up pinch pot hollow form or um, clay hollow form or just anything along those lines. Um, and you're gonna find a lot of really great examples that could, that could guide you. But try to do something original. Don't just copy something um, that's online, but let's say you see about a billion pictures of people turning this into a pumpkin because it's often a fall project and um, it's pumpkin spice season. So pumpkins are pretty inspirational right now. So let's say you wanna make it a pumpkin. You could do that, make it your own pumpkin, but you can find a lot of inspirational pictures online for something like that. But you could just decorate this with some really beautiful patterns. It doesn't have to be something. Um, you could just create some kind of really interesting design. You could turn it into an animal, give it like a cute little beak, give it some ears. Um, you know, you can do whatever you want with this, but you've got to do something decorative. Um, before we get to the decoration part though, like mentioned smoothing and refining, and I have this little wheel here that I can kind of spin it around on. You may not have that, you might take, um, if you wanna kind of have a surface that can move around, you could take your craft foam and you can kind of like scooch it around. It kind of slides a little bit more easily on this um, craft foam surface. So as I'm working and you think it'd be really helpful to have a surface that I can spin, try to use that craft foam on a nice slick table. Um, okay, so number one, this is not leather hard. It's still plastic, but it's been dried a little bit. I let this sit out for a little while. Um, it's probably been a couple hours since I put this form together and I let it sit on a, just a piece of wood board. Um, you could put it on your canvas. Just let this dry out just a little bit so that you're working with something a little stronger than that super, super wet plastic clay that just gets kind of messy. This is gonna hold its form and hold up to a little decorating um, a little bit better. So first, first step, let it dry out a little bit. If you can't do this the same uh, day that you put your forms together, then what I would recommend is wrap this up overnight. And then when you know you're gonna work on it, maybe take this out and let it sit for an hour. Maybe even let it sit in the sun for a few minutes if it gets sunny or something like that. Um, but uh, you, could, you can take a hair dryer to it a little bit, just a little bit, but not too much. Um, but letting it sit out for an hour or two sometimes just is all it takes. Um, okay, so you wanna let it sit out, dry up a little bit, make it a little bit firmer. Um, like I could still change the shape of this if I wanted to. Um, it's, it's pretty like pushable. You can kind of see how I push that in. Um, now that's gonna be a decoration um, feature because it's no getting it back. Um, but it's, uh, it's a little bit stronger than, than it was when I first put it together. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take advantage of my thinking about my design time to put a foot on. So I want everyone to have a foot. And one thing you can do for a foot is you can tap and get that flat base. That's always a good way to start. Once you have that flat base, you can kind of see where this is gonna sit so I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna set it down. I'm gonna set it down on something soft so it doesn't lose its shape um, completely. If you have like a little pillow, sometimes that helps. I'm gonna take a little piece of clay and I'm gonna roll a coil. I'm gonna do this on my tabletop here. I'm gonna roll a coil. Everyone hopefully got to do this in art one. If you were in my spring 2020 class, you may have missed out on the coil project, um, but hopefully everybody's done this at some point in their life. You're just rolling out a rope of clay, and then you're gonna take your scoring tool and you're gonna score along the edge of that flat space. And I'm gonna use that, that little scoring card. I'm gonna go a couple different directions. And I'm gonna score a nice place. Now I'm gonna do that same thing on my coil. 
Now, time for slip. Um, when you are when you need slip, just get a little container and fill it with water. Water works. You don't have to add clay to it, but as you're working, you, if you can keep this as your slip container, just keep it, especially if it has a lid. And if you need an excuse to get some delicious ice cream, Talenti makes perfect slip cups. They have a little, um, a little lid that fastens on. Um, just throw in the occasional little clay booger, especially if they're dried up pieces of clay. When you, whenever you have little extra pieces of clay, and you can see it doesn't take much, a couple little tiny pieces of clay, um, and you've got some water um, with clay slip mixture. Um, and that slip, you can take your brush, take my brush here. Um, but like I said, you can just use water if you don't have slip. I'm gonna brush a little on. I'm gonna brush a little on, doesn't need much. I'm gonna add a foot. And a foot is just what the piece will rest on. I'm gonna take my card here. I can use this card as a cutting tool. Okay, so I've slipped and scored, and this is what that looks like before. I'm adding my coil, and I'm gonna press down, and if you're doing this right, you should see a little bubble of slip squish out. You wanna put a little bit of pressure. And then once you get to the end, take off any extra, and you can start smoothing this out. Now this is fresh clay, so it's a little softer, so I'm gonna to try to avoid sitting it down too much with too much pressure on it. And I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more later on. But I might even take my brush, I'm gonna wipe that off here, I might even take my brush and just kind of brush that seam a little bit. That helps kind of compress, which that compression helps join those two pieces of clay and make sure that they're they're joined really well. So this needs to be cleaned up a little bit later, but it's a little easier to do cleanup work when it's a little drier. So now I have a foot and I'm probably gonna fuss with that a lot because I like a really nice clean foot. Um, but I have a foot, I'm gonna gently set it down. Then you have to decide, question number one, is this a sculpture or is this a jar? If it's a jar, you gotta cut a lid. Um, if you're gonna cut a lid, what I recommend is taking um, anything you can cut with. You can cut with an X-Acto knife. If you have an old butter knife, that works. Um, I think that I included um, a, a paper clip that you could turn into a needle tool. You can use that to cut. You could even use one of your cards, like if you use the scoring card and you use the other end, you could use that to potentially draw a line and cut. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna draw a line and it's kind of easier if you can turn the object and keep your hand still, you get a pretty good circle where you wanna cut. So let's say I wanna cut this. You do not have to cut this. If you decide to make just a really cool pattern and, and turn it into a sculpture, that's fine, but you will need to take something, probably your needle tool, AKA your paper clip tool, and poke a hole in it. That way, that little tiny hole doesn't have to be very visible, doesn't have to be very big, um, but that little tiny hole will allow air to escape so that when it is firing, that trapped air doesn't create um, cracks or um, explosions or anything like that. But if you want a lid, here's what I recommend. Cut at an angle. See how I have this at an angle? Um, this way, when you have your lid, it has a way to sit in. And before you finish this completely, what I'm going to do is create a key. So you can see here, I haven't cut here all the way to meet the end. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna create a key, which means a difference in that line that shows you how to open it. This is gonna be a little easier if I use this tool and this tool. 
All right, so now I have hopefully a lid. You may have to kind of go back over those cuts. Don't force it. Make sure that everything is cut all the way through. And there I go, I have my lid, I have my base. I'm gonna set this lid aside. I'm gonna smooth out. Again, make sure your clay isn't too wet. If it's really wet, it's gonna be harder to smooth out. But you're gonna want to smooth out that place you just cut, the opening. You wanna smooth that out and you're gonna to wanna to smooth that out on the lid too. You're gonna to need to make sure that this lid is nice and clean. So, and when you are smoothing this out, occasionally you're going to want to set your lid back to make sure it still fits. You don't wanna lose your shape. All right, so I've got my lid cut. I can go back and change or and uh, refine that a little bit later. Um, I can go inside and smooth out the inside of where I joined my two pinch pots. Um, if there's any bumps or odd places there, if you're going to be opening your jar, now the interior space is part of your piece. And you have to consider that the interior, the way it looks, is going to affect your overall quality of the piece. So you have to take in, into account the nice smooth interior walls. You don't want to have the interior walls looking really messy. Okay, so now let's think about design. Let's say I want to add some details. <sighs> There's no one answer. You can really do whatever you can think of. Um, I would say go to Google because there are a ton of artists who have posted all sorts of really great things. Um, but you can use your tools, let's see, use your tools to create lines in the surface. That's kind of hard to see, but you see I've created some lines. Um, you could kind of figure out, um, you could measure out and create like dots so that you know where the sides are and where the front and back is and then create like an even design. You can take your loop tools and carve lines. So let's say you want to make um, a field of flowers. I could take my tools and I could carve stems. I could think of an interesting way to do this. I could look at other artists and their work, um, especially from my research the other day when I, in my sketchbook, listed some artists um, that I would like. I can um, find some tools that have, like let's say you you find a pencil. I've got so many things in my, my room here. You could take a pencil or something and kind of stamp in some shapes. So maybe I create a pattern like that. It's pretty easy to do. Um, there's a ton of things that you'll have laying around your house that'll create different kinds of patterns. Let's say you wanna add something sculptural. You could take a ball of clay, roll it up, similar to what we did when we made our stamps, and I could squish it flat, add just a tiny bit of water maybe if I need to, um, and I could create a shape. So let's say I'm making a field of flowers as my design. So maybe I am creating a leaf or maybe I am real excited about fall. So I'm going to dive into that pumpkin life and turn this into a pumpkin. Um, I could do that. Maybe I'm making a fish because I love fish. I don't personally love fish. I mean, I like fish just fine. Um, but let's say you love fish and you wanna add some scales and then add fins. Um, you just use your fingers, create a nice little shape. 
and I'm gonna add this as not only a decoration, but also a handle. So I'm going to take my scoring tool, which has escaped me. This will be a good exercise in keeping track of your tools. I'm going to take a little bit of my slip and I'm going to add. And if I can, if you have an opening, anytime you can support from the inside, it's really helpful. So see, I'm supporting from the inside and I'm adding and then I might take either my finger and smooth it out. Looks like I've got a low battery, um, which means I gotta wrap it up. I might take my finger and smooth that out. I might take my brush and smooth that out, especially if you have a teeny tiny brush. I might take those wooden tools um, and then maybe I'll go in with my tools and carve details on my 3D pieces. So, um, There's a good good start. You can kind of see that a little bit. All right. So this is just sort of to try to get you thinking about what to do. Patterns. Make it into an object. Turn it into a sculpture. Add three-dimensional things coming off of it. Make sure, though, that you do have some kind of base or foot. And you can be creative with that. You can look up other options. But if you want to just stick with the simple, straightforward coil foot, that's fine. And most importantly, sign your work. So when you're all done... Take one of your tools and put your initials or your name at the bottom so that way I know it's yours. Okay, so have fun. Go decorate. This is the first project, so it's really just kind of a, let's see what we can do. I'm looking for a really good quality form. Um, I'm looking for you to be a little creative with how you decorate, um, and I'm looking for you to spend a little time on it. When you are not working on it, wrap it up in plastic. You don't want it to dry out too much before you get to the stage that you want to be to. Um, so make sure you're constantly wrapping this up. Um, make sure that you're smoothing out any little scoring lines that you see. I don't want to see lines of scoring. Um, make sure that you're smoothing out any weird little bubbles or weird spots. Um, and of course, make sure you're having fun, obviously. All right, so let me know if you have any questions. I'm here for you. Have a good time. Bye.